Hello, promotional candidates. I'm Colonel Tim Gillette here at TrainForPromotion.com, and I'd like to welcome you to my training workshop today entitled Succeeding in the Law Enforcement Assessment Center. In today's training segment, I'll be demonstrating the tactical scenario exercise, which is one of the most popular exercises presented to promotional candidates participating in a law enforcement assessment center. In this particular exercise, candidates may be given little or no time to prepare a response to a given tactical scenario, and then approximately 8 to 12 minutes to present their verbal response to that scenario. Now, in presenting their response to the scenario, candidates would be expected to, one, identify and prioritize the major concerns that that scenario presents to them in their role as a supervisor, two, utilize appropriate resources in responding to the situation, Three, apply the key principles of incident command in managing that incident. And four, make critical tactical decisions in accordance with their agency's mission, policy procedures, and training. In doing so, the candidates will be evaluated by the assessors on their ability to demonstrate several key behavioral dimensions to include leadership, decision-making, problem analysis, planning and organizing, adaptability, and oral communications. Now, having said that, let me go ahead and demonstrate the tactical scenario exercise for you as part of today's training segment. The particular scenario that I've chosen to demonstrate today is a very common scenario, often referred to as the officer down with possible barricaded suspect and hostage situation. Now, as I give my response to this scenario, I'll be basing my responses on my past experience as a veteran law enforcement supervisor and commander and as a nationally certified assessor for law enforcement assessment centers. Now, having said that, let me go ahead and read the scenario to you as it's depicted on your screen. The scenario reads as follows. Your officers are responding to a silent hold for alarm at a local bank in your city. Upon your first officer's arrival on the scene, a suspect has shot your officer. The officer is not responding to the police radio. What actions will you take to address this situation? Now, as I give my response to this particular scenario, today I'll be giving a response from the perspective of a sergeant promotional candidate, but I want you to understand that my response could be easily modified to apply to both lieutenant and captain promotional candidates as well. Now, having said that, let me go ahead and give you my response to this scenario. <clears throat> This situation involves one of my officers who's been shot while responding to a silent hold alarm at a local bank. And since the officer is not responding to the police radio, we don't know if we still have suspects on the scene or a possible bear case suspect with hostage situation. As such, my priority concerns here are first and foremost, the immediate rescue of that injured officer and any other victims and hostages, as well as the safety of other persons in the immediate area and other personnel responding to the scene. My other priority concerns here would be the apprehension suspect and securing the crime scene. To address these concerns, my first objective would be to establish immediate communication. I'm gonna direct dispatch to clear the air and maintain radio contact with the first officer on the scene. Understanding that that first officer on the scene is gonna be our initial incident commander. And it'll be that officer's responsibility to engage in any threats that are present at the scene to announce his radio designator as command, and to assess that situation to determine if we still have a hot zone or any dangers posed to responding personnel. I want that officer to give us the location of the injured officer and any other victims and hostages and suspects, and if the suspect has fled, to put out a bolo on that suspect. I also want that officer to identify our initial perimeter points and what approach routes our officers should take so they can respond safely to this scene. Now, as we're getting this situational assessment from that first officer on the scene, I'm gonna direct dispatch to notify fire rescue where we want them to respond to in the event that we do have a hot zone and need a staging area for them to respond to. I'm also gonna direct dispatch to contact the bank and bank security so we can get real-time information as to the location of any other victims, hostages, or suspects that may still be inside the bank. And I'm also gonna direct dispatch to contact my lieutenant so that we can make command notifications. Now, as we're getting this communication, I'll be responding to the scene and directing additional units to respond so that we can contain and control this incident and begin rescue efforts. 
I'm going to direct dispatch to clear all road patrol units who are not on emergency calls for service and have them respond to the scene to support the initial incident commander and to start setting up inner and outer perimeters. I'm also going to request our traffic unit to divert traffic from the area and to set up ingress egress routes for emergency vehicles. I'm going to request K-9 for search and apprehension efforts. I'll request the SWAT team and the hostage negotiator for tactical deployment purposes. I'll request detectives and the crime scene unit for investigative purposes. And I'll request our media relations unit to respond to set up a media area at a safe distance outside the outer perimeter where we can give timely community alerts and media releases. Externally, I'll be requesting fire rescue for medical assistance. I'll request mutual aid to have their agencies send their officers to our, to our perimeters to help us with perimeters and also handle priority calls for service during this time period, other emergency calls. And I also request the Sheriff's Office to have an aviation unit to give us an overview of the incident. And I'll request the state police to set up traffic checkpoints in the event the suspect has fled via vehicle. I also request FBI to respond because they investigate bank robberies with shooting victims. Now, as we're getting these resources to the scene, I'll be responding to the scene to set up a unified command post at a safe distance outside the inner perimeter where I will take command of the incident and I'll be coordinating our efforts. Upon my arrival, I will do a transfer of command with the initial incident commander, at which time I'll be briefed on the incident, I'll assess my resource needs, and I'll announce my authority as the incident commander. Upon doing so, at my command post, I'll set up my initial ICS structure to include a safety officer who will identify any safety concerns or equipment we need that we have during this operation. I'll assign a uh, liaison officer to coordinate communications with other agencies that will be responding to assist us in this operation. Also a uh, information officer to disseminate information to the community and to the media. At this time at my command post, I'll also have representatives of critical resources that will be supporting us during this operation. At this time, I would also designate a staging area for additional resources to respond to so that we have those resources available as the situation evolves. I'll also request another supervisor to serve as our staging area manager to help us deploy those resources as, need, as the need situation evolves, need and situation evolves. And I will also assign a scribe to track and record our activities during this time period. I'll also make sure that I request dispatch to give us multiple tactical channels, radio channels, so that we can communicate effectively throughout this operation. And also request dispatch to assign another supervisor to handle our calls or service during this time period. Now, throughout this time period, I'll be directing my officer's efforts and addressing each of our priority concerns. Starting with that first priority concern of rescue and safety, I'll assess that situation to determine if we could tactically rescue the injured officer and any other victims without endangering lives. And if we can, I'll coordinate with the fire rescue and my officers on the scene to set up a casualty collection point so we can get these victims to the hospital as quickly as possible. I'll also request another supervisor to respond to the hospital to handle that scene and to assist us in getting the injured officer's family notified and transported to the hospital. Now, on the other hand, if we cannot rescue that injured officer and other victims without endangering lives because we have an active threat present at the scene, in that case, I will consult with the SWAT team commander and per policy, I will yield the inner perimeter to the SWAT team and my officers would fall into a support role from just outside the inner perimeter. At this time, I would also assign officers to contact nearby businesses, schools and residences and alert them to go into a lockdown procedure so we can ensure their safety during this time period. Now, in reference to the second priority concern, the apprehension of the suspect, well, if we do have a barricaded suspect, I'll make sure my officers continue to support the SWAT team and the hostage negotiator until such time we can secure that suspect and or terminate the threat. Now, if on the other hand, we don't have a barricaded suspect, in that situation, I'll make sure I put out timely updated bolos so that all officers on our perimeters and all other agencies responding to assist us can be kept updated with the latest information on the suspect. At this time, I'll also coordinate with my canine and aviation unit to initiate search and arrest efforts of the immediate area. In doing so, I'll conduct a grid search and assign my officers into search teams 
where they can search the immediate areas and also respond to calls involved, involving possible sightings of the suspect. And finally, in reference to the third concern, securing the crime scene, I'll coordinate with the detective supervisor to secure that scene once we clear the hot zone and to set up an entry control point so we can identify people coming in out of our scene. I'll also assign officers to assist the detectives in securing evidence and detain witnesses. Now, throughout this time period, I'll be keeping my lieutenant updated on our progress and developing contingency plans should this situation escalate or prolong. And if it does, at that time, I would consider expanding my ICS structure to include operations, logistics, planning, and finance chiefs. Now, as my lieutenant arrives on the scene, I'll brief him on the situation, and per policy, the lieutenant would make a decision as to whether to take over as an incident commander. If lieutenant does make that decision, at that time, I would fall into a support role as the operational supervisor. Now, at the conclusion of this event, I'm going to make sure we have follow-up communication in place. I'm going to conduct a debriefing to make sure all officers are accounted for, to critique our response and identify any further actions that need to be taken. I also request victim services and the chaplain to respond to the hospital and handle that scene and to assist the victims and their families. I too will respond to the hospital to see what I can do to support my injured officer and his family. I'll also respond back to the bank to check on their staff and see what assistance we can provide them. I'll make sure we give them a case card and a victim's rights brochure so they know what services we have available to assist them. I'll also coordinate with bank security to review our incident response plan on these type of incidents so we can minimize the potential for future injuries on these type of cases. And also reach out to the FBI investigators to see what assistance we can provide the FBI for their investigation. Now at this time, I'll make sure I review all police reports and they're submitted timely and accurately. I'll prepare any supervisory reports, such as, in this case, an officer injury report and a use of force report if we return fire. I'll also prepare an after action report for my lieutenant and future training purposes. I'll prepare any accommodations or thank you letters that would be appropriate. So in summary, in responding to this situation, I have uh, identified and prioritized my major concerns. I've utilized appropriate resources in responding to the situation. I've applied the key principles of instant command in managing this incident. And I've made critical tactical decisions in accordance with my agency's mission, policy and procedures, and training. In doing so, I'm confident that I would have provided my officers timely and decisive leadership in directing their efforts and bringing this situation to a successful conclusion. Thank you. Well, promotional candidates, that concludes this training segment on the tactical scenario exercise. Now, if you'd like to learn more about my training workshop, which comes with uh, 12 hours of audio tape training modules, a training booklet, and practice assessment center exercises, please visit me at trainforpromotion.com. Here you can review my student testimonials and also learn about some of the personal coaching sessions I provide to promotional candidates and helping them achieve their goal of getting promoted. Um, and also, on that note, I'd like to just thank you for your time today. I appreciate you listening in. And I look forward to working with you and helping you achieve your goal of getting promoted and preparing for your next assessment center. Thank you.